Hi guys, my name is Yevita. Uh, I'm a product designer uh, based in the UK and yeah, welcome to my channel. So today what I'll be talking to you about is app critique. And the, the app that I'll be critiquing is called Clubhouse. So what is Clubhouse? It's a social networking app based on audio chat. So you basically uh, can download the app, join a conversation of the topic of your liking, and even be a part of it, ask questions and listen to answers from some really interesting people. So I'm really excited about this and I've been using this app for a few days now and I would really like to share with you how I would critique it if I were, say, in an interview. So yes, yeah, so when would you use it? It's usually a part of the recruitment process at a company. So you would be asked by either the recruiter or the people at the company themselves uh, to critique an app either of your choice or uh, an app that they will choose for you. If that is an app uh, that they will choose for you, it's a little bit more difficult to do because obviously you don't know what they are going to ask you to do. However, on the other hand, it is good because that means that before you join and have that interview with them, and you have to critique something, you'll do so much practice to make sure that you did it right. However, if this is, you know, an app of your choice, that's also great because you can do some preliminary research yourself. If this is an app that you like, love using, say, Airbnb, you clearly, you know, know this app uh, inside out and you know what their users are, problems, their needs, etc. So it should be easier for you. So yeah, so uh, what would you like to uh, cover in an app critique. There are quite a few topics that I like to focus on and have in, have in mind before I uh, actually start doing it. So uh, you would want to talk about the users of the app, uh, what is the problem there that the app is trying to solve and why, um, some visual visualization of the app, what, what do you think about its UI, UX, uh, what do you like about it, what would you improve and why, and just generally about the app itself. Um, great, so FYI, uh, Clubhouse is only available on an iPhone. Okay, cool. So let's go to Clubhouse. So funny, I have been here told that uh, like well-timed notifications, I opened that, that there's, uh, some, there are some conversations happening here, which is great. Okay, so when I do app critiques, even though I do need to talk about, you know, their users, the problem they're trying to solve, what I like doing first is to basically just open the app, look at its UI, behave, see how it behaves, so experience its user experience, I'll see how users would experience it myself in this case, and see what I would improve. And then after that, once I learn a little bit more about the app, then I will talk about, you know, what I think their users are, their end users are, and what type of uh, problems this app is trying to solve and why. So just looking at this here, I can see that, uh, oh, what I like about this is it's clean look. Um, there's quite a lot of white space, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, their headers are quite, quite clean. The hierarchy of the page is pretty good as well. Uh, just looking you know, at, this, at this at first glance, I can also see that there are some rooms open here. However, what is not clear to me is why they are here. They are, they are open, however, it's not very clear that this is happening now. So I guess one of the things that I would improve is that if this Brain Care Club is on right now, I would want to be able to see uh, this uh, conversation is on or something along those lines. Uh, similar, you know, to the design with purpose and behind the lens, etc. So that's great. Um, another thing that I do like is uh, the visualization itself. I mean, the icons are quite uh, consistent, consistent. The images used here are also quite consistent in terms of you know the the pictures or their how it is laid out what i'm not quite so sure about is 
this top area in this app. So I wouldn't know exactly. Also, I'm not sure exactly uh, whether it is possible to tap on. So I mean, to find out if it's tappable, I'll tap on it, but it's not very, it's not self-explanatory. Um, so let me just tap on that and see what happens. Okay, so I'm taken to the explore area of the app, which is great, um, but still not very clear. So if they would want me to do that, they should probably either change the UI or maybe they could change or move this search icon from the top left for it to take the full width of the screen. Uh, another thing that I do think they want me to do here right away is basically engage with their content. And you can engage with their content by either, you know, jumping into the room, which is, you know, this brain care club or design with purpose, or this, and this is their primary call to action, is by starting a room. You can start a room by, uh, or start a conversation with other people by tapping this uh, button. And that's great because it's quite simple. You can choose what type of conversations you want here is really good as well. So you can either have it open to everyone. So I guess the whole world will hear you talk or you can have it social. So you can start this room with you basically are the person who chooses who should be involved in the conversation, which is great. This I love. There's not much actually I can change here. I love, I pretty much love everything about this uh, use case here. So starting a conversation or starting a room. Love it. Okay, great. So in terms of um, the users, so what type of users do I think this is created for? So the type of users are probably people like myself who would want to be able to listen to, to intelligent conversations, learn from them, be a part of something that is happening right now. Because looking at this, you can't really record these, so they're not recorded, so you can't uh, listen to them, uh, to these as you would normally in a podcast. And so that's the one type, the listeners. And the other type are the creators or the conversa conversationalists themselves who create the rooms. And so these will be the people who... Um, who might have not had a chance to easily connect with other people to talk about things. And in a way it's easier, you can have a phone call, you can have a Zoom call or WhatsApp, uh, or maybe do such thing on Twitter and other areas. Uh, but in here, I believe what they are doing is making it simpler for the people to, to, to connect with others uh, by having conversations with them uh, or have people having conversations with one another. But also the end users would be people who are probably in, very interested in a specific topic. So I'm tech focused. I'm a product designer myself, but and the topics that I follow are with relation to, uh, say, SaaS startups in general technology um, and everything that might help me to run my business better if I had a business or be a better product designer. So yeah, so these are the types of users that you would uh, that but that this app would be for. Uh, in terms of the problem, what type of problem they are trying to solve here is that um, when when we think about the podcasts and what type of uh, content is being created there or how podcasts are run, I love podcasts myself because I can read them whenever I want, read them, listen to them whenever I want. And also, you know, people having conversations here, but these kind of uh, podcasts are pre-recorded. They're also edited. So anything in here is uh, in podcasts uh, is in some way shaped for the end uh, users, for the for their audience. Um, what Clubhouse is doing here is um, enabling people to uh, listen to real conversations. So there are no blockers here. Uh, there's nothing, you can't add it, edit anything out. It's just what it is. It's just the conversations like people are having. So this level of authenticity is great. And so uh, the problem here that, uh, that the Clubhouse are solving is basically enabling people to have conversations more easily. 
So for instance, especially in the world that we are living now with COVID-19 COVID and the whole world being in a lockdown, uh, going out and having a conversation with your friends or, you know, business partners or whatever is quite difficult because you can't be, you know, you have to maintain that social distancing. Um, and so being able to do that here online is priceless. Uh, like jumping on a call is very easy. And so there is no like special prep that you have to do. You are or more likely you don't have to do. And so this is quite a lot, a lot simpler that it would be, uh, say, with when, when going out, for instance. Now let's talk about, uh, or let's go through one thing that I'd like to do here. For instance, if I were to explore more content, so say I want to uh, use their search and see how that performs and I'll see what I like or dislike about it. And so in here, actually, so this type of thing will probably be asked by uh, the recruiter or by the company uh, themselves. However, uh, it is more of a um, one-sided interview here, at least for a huge, a big part of it. You would want to talk about, uh, you know, the app yourself. You're unlikely to be prompted very often because I would expect you to know what you need to talk about. Um, but if they don't prompt you, you may suggest that you would like to go through just like one use case. And for instance, that might be re or searching new content. Um, see how easy it is to explore new content. So if I go to uh, search, what I do like about this is that it's not an empty screen. It's quite easy to see here that they want me to, or they're giving me suggestions. So even if I tapped on, tapped on it accidentally, I can still uh, see what is out there available. So they're starting off with telling me what people to, there are here to follow, that there are more people to follow by showing, by tapping show more people. But there are also some inter interesting conversations that I could follow as well. So anything about tech, hanging out, life, identity, and that's great. I love it. Uh, it's almost like there is no opportunity to be bored. Uh, you can always listen to interesting things. Uh, so that's great. So if I actually go to find people in clubs, so let's say that I would like to find out a bit more about, or find out if there is Elon Musk available here on Clubhouse. Elon, I would search for Elon Musk. And that's great. There are many of them. <laughs> and so this is probably one of the things that I dislike. So we have quite a few Elon Musks here and it's really quite hard to tell which one is the one that is the, uh, the one I want to follow. So the real one. And so one of the things that they might want to do here, if they were to improve it slightly, is to indicate uh, that which of those people is the real Elon Musk. And so like if you look at Cora or Twitter or Facebook, there's like a little tag uh, in the top right corner of their name with like a tick, I think like a, like a blue tick often, to indicate that this person is the real person. Um, but since I think I already am following him, uh, we'll take a look in a minute, what I would do to find out whether this is the real person or the actual person that I want to follow, I would tap on them and see how many followers they have. And it, this seems like it's probably them. So because they have 1.6 million followers, um, which is quite funny because I actually went through this app a bit earlier and he had 1.5 million followers. So that was probably like 10 minutes ago. Uh, okay, so if I go back, now I can, uh, yeah, basically choose to follow him or not. Then I can also go to clubs. So I'm not sure why exactly this shows me uh, these results for Elon Musk. If I went inside, it looks like that maybe his name is in here, which makes sense. Um, then why this would come up. Um, okay, so actually let's do that again. I'd like to see what's going to be shown. When you tap on this star icon, people to follow. I'm not exactly sure uh, why the star icon shows you people to follow. Um, could this be the people that they follow? 
um, I'm not sure. So this isn't quite clear. So if I were to improve this, um, I would probably just add some sort of description to what this does. And this might be by tapping on that and saying, adding a description under people to follow what this does, because that isn't very clear. This is when Elon Musk talks, notify me. So that's very interesting. This is, this is what I love about this as well. Great. Uh, if I really care about a speaker and I really want to make sure that I will hear what they have to say about a particular topic, whatever that is in Elon Musk's case, you would want to, I would want to be notified about it always. Um, okay. Let's close this, um, go back. Okay. In terms of the general feel that I have about this, I really, I really like it. I like it in a way of being able to be a part of something big. It's almost like a personalized radio for you. It may actually completely change the way we are listening to content online. Because, for instance, if you think about podcasts, and a podcast is basically an edited piece of content or a conversation where things that might be cut out and so it might necessarily not be as authentic, but this is almost like a Gary Vaynerchuk of uh, conversations. So Gary Vaynerchuk is famous for his authenticity in his videos. And in here, because these conversations are live as well, uh, you, know that no you know that nothing can be edited out of them. You are just listening to people uh, have a conversation, which, which is great. Um, having said that, uh, what I dislike is the fact that there are many conversations, great conversations that are happening at night, our time or the UK time, which is, you know, minus eight hours uh, in, in, say, California. And because this content is it, isn't recorded, it is quite hard to uh, have access to it after, after that. Well, it's impossible to have access uh, to it later on. So I think this might be something that Clubhouse might want to change in the future in order to engage even more people in the future that they might uh, record all of the content uh, that is created here. Another thing that I do like about that, unlike uh, what we have in podcasts, podcasts are great and I love them. There's so many great ones, but I can't engage in them. I can't say raise a hand and say that I would like to ask a question. It's not as easy as it is here. And here I could join a room and ask to ask a question and potentially be allowed to have a conversation with people who, are, who would never be accessible to me uh, in the real world. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, or would like to share with me what you include in your app critique, please let me know in the comments down below. Again, thanks so much for watching. Until next video. Bye!